this lesson, we'll continue to uncover the mysteries behind water balance. Recall that our kidneys play a critical role in regulating the volume and osmolarity of extracellular fluid by variably concentrating or diluting the urine. How does this happen? Well, to answer this question, we need to understand a very important physiological mechanism. Countercurrent multiplication. Full disclosure, this topic can throw some physiology students for a bit of a loop, but counter to current opinion, renal physiology can be quite the adventure when you get sketchy on your side, so let's begin. But before we embark on this adventure, let's orient ourselves to the scene. Think of the kidney as a multi-layered organ with an outer cortex and an inner medulla, which tapers off into the papilla. That's the spot where urine is collected. The workhorse of the kidney is the nephron, or renal tubule, a system of winding tubes that filter the blood and make urine. Let this river here represent a segment of the renal tubule. We'll identify which specific segment we're talking about in a moment. For now, just appreciate that this river has a constant flow of water, representing the fluid inside the tubule. The tissue surrounding the renal tubule is referred to as the interstitial space, or interstitium, symbolized here by this lake that's sitting in the space between these two segments of river. In various parts of the renal tubule, water and solutes flow into the interstitial space to be reabsorbed back into the blood. Let this water inside the lake represent the interstitial fluid. In the outer layer of the kidney, i.e. the cortex, the osmolarity of the interstitial fluid is similar to plasma, right around 300 milliosmoles per liter. Notice the three-shaped palm tree and double zero sun and moon here. As you go deeper into the kidney, from the cortex to the papilla, the osmolarity of the interstitial fluid increases by a lot. We're talking up to 1,200 milliosmoles per liter. This osmotic gradient, represented by the gradient of color in our lake here, is known as the corticopapillary gradient. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's remove this gradient in the lake and learn how the kidney creates this osmotic gradient one step at a time. The key player behind the corticopapillary gradient is the Lupa Henle, cleverly depicted by this looping U-shaped river. The Lupa Henle is found within the renal medulla, serving as a conduit for fluid to flow from more proximal parts of the renal tubule to more distal parts. But it doesn't just passively let fluid move through it. The Lupa Henle actually serves as a reserve through which the body can recover water and salt to help regulate osmolarity. In fact, the Lupa Henle actively adds sodium chloride to the interstitial fluid, a key step in the process of countercurrent multiplication. And when we consider countercurrent multiplication, we need to break it down into two parts. The movement of filtrate, that's the precursor to urine, through the renal tubule, and the movement of solutes and water between the tubule and interstitial space. We can think of the word current in two ways. First, as a flow of fluid between two communicating departments, compartment A, the tubular fluid, or the fluid contained inside the tubular lumen, and compartment B, the interstitial fluid, or the fluid contained outside of the lumen. Second, we can further break down the tubular current into two flows that literally run counter to one another, a descending flow and an ascending flow. Note how the River Henley in our scene forms this U-shape with a clear descending flow, a bend, and ascending flow. The descending limb, represented by the left-sided arm of the River Henley, and this descending sand border is known as the thin limb. The descending limb's thin walls allow water to freely flow from the tubular lumen into the interstitial space. In other words, it's water permeable. Much like these crashing waves, the flow of water will move from a compartment with more water but less solute to a compartment with less water but more solute, until the fluid osmolarity is the same between the two compartments. This passive process is known as osmosis. Let the equal sign cactus arms placed between the river and lake here help you recall the equilibration of osmolarity between the tubular and interstitial fluid on the descending side of the Lupa Henle. Flow that runs counter to the descending limb is naturally found in the ascending limb, 
like this water that's flowing back up through the right side of the river. You'll also notice that this mountaineer is climbing up the mountain, just as ascending flow runs up the Lupa Henley. Most of the ascending limb is known as the thick ascending limb because of its thick apical membrane. This membrane serves as an important barrier that is impermeable to water. This water impermeability is very important because it allows salt and salt alone to move out into the interstitium from the ascending limb. And you can see that our interstitial lake feels pretty salty about this. <laughs>